Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching Tesla Time News. Episode 394. On Now You Know. Since the last time we talked about Masterworks, there's been a lot of changes. But none of them have had any effect on their progress. Since the last time we checked in December, they've sold two art pieces for a combined $1.4 million. And they paid out the distributable proceeds to investors like us. Although art as an asset is different from investing in securities, the art market historically holds its ground when stocks slip, with near zero correlation to the S&P 500. The first to securitize this asset is Masterworks, and it couldn't have come at a better time. Deloitte's latest projections have the art market as a whole growing to $2.9 trillion by 2026. That's a 31% nominal increase in less than two years. And it doesn't even account for the higher growth of the upper echelon pieces on their own, like the ones that Masterworks offers. While these metrics apply to whole art and not art securities, these are names like Picasso, Banksy, Kusama, names that drive the whole industry. All offerings are unique, but shares of these have sold out within minutes. Our subscribers can get priority access to offerings from these artists and more using the QR code on screen or going to masterworks.com slash now you know. As with any investment, past performance is not indicative of future returns. Investing involves risk. Thanks to Masterworks for sponsoring this episode. Our first story this week is absolutely incredible. Elon tweeted out, live stream of Neuralink demonstrating telepathy, controlling a computer and playing video games just by thinking. So Norland Arbaugh, he's 29 years old, Eight years ago, he had a freak diving accident. He had spine damage to his C4 and C5, and he became a complete quadriplegic. Bliss, a Neuralink engineer, is there next to Noland. Noland became the first Neuralink human trial patient. A Neuralink chip was implanted in Noland's brain in January. Noland can now play chess with his brain. <laughs> Uh, right there, he just paused the music with his brain. So Noland imagines the cursor moving like the force. Um, basically, it was like uh, using the force on the cursor <laughs> and I could get it to move wherever I wanted, just stare somewhere in the screen and it would move where I wanted it to, um, which was such a wild experience. This guy wants to know if you feel like a wizard. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, it's, it's, it's crazy. It really is. Um, it's so cool. I'm so freaking lucky to be a part of this and stuff. I mean, I just, every day it seems like we're new, learning new stuff and uh, I just can't even describe how, how cool it is to be able to do this. I don't want people to think that it is, like this is the end of the journey. There's still a lot of work to be done, um, but it has already changed my life. And I think that people who are thinking about saying applying for the human trials or are thinking about, you know, finding some way to um, help out with this, um, to, you know, do your part. And that's the reason I got into it was because I just wanted to help. Um, I wanted to be a part of something that I feel like is going to change the world. Um, I think, like, there's nothing to be afraid of with that. The surgery was super easy. I literally was released from the hospital a day later um, I have no, like, cognitive impairments. Uh, it's really awesome, and I want to thank Neuralink um, for doing this, for working hard every day to make this, you know, a uh, reality. I think that they are going to change the world. Like, I am so moved by Noland and his journey. I mean, some people commented asking how Neuralink tracked his eye movement. No, he just thinks about moving the cursor. Elon tweeted, long term, it is possible to shunt the signals from the brain motor cortex past the damaged part of the spine to enable people to walk again and use their arms normally. Bill Ackman said, this is incredible, a must watch. There is real hope for quads and other paralyzed people to recover. And Elon went on to say the potential is profound. Adrian Dittman said, this is the next big step towards a future in which blindness and paralysis will effectively be cured. And Elon said, yeah. And Doge Designer said, the first human Neuralink patient who is paralyzed is able to control a computer and play chess just by thinking. And Elon said, just the beginning. His happiness says it all. And Elon said, yeah. Smoke Away says, imagine someone controlling an optimus with their Neuralink. Elon said, Optimus limbs replacing lost human limbs could ultimately be controlled with superhuman dexterity by an implanted Neuralink. Deus Ex slash Cyberpunk IRL. And Doge Designer had this quote from Elon, even if someone has never had vision ever, like they were born blind, we believe that we can still restore vision using Neuralink. 
they were born blind, we, we believe they can, they, they can, we can still restore vision because the, the visual part of the cortex is still, still there. Even if they've never seen before, uh, we're, we're confident that they, they, could, they could see. Andy Lon said blind sight is the next Neuralink product after telepathy. He went on to say, I should mention that the blind sight implant is already working in monkeys. Resolution will be low at first, like early Nintendo graphics, but ultimately may exceed normal human vision. Also, no monkey has died or been seriously injured by a Neuralink device. John Ehrlichman tweeted, 2017 headline of Elon Musk launches Neuralink. And then the 2024 headline, Elon Musk Neuralink shows first patient using its brain implant. And Elon said, took a long time to first human as we wanted to be super sure it would be safe and would work well. Progress will accelerate dramatically going forward. And I think Elon missed the point there. That was only seven years that they went from, I don't know, let's make a chip that goes in your brain mm -hmm. to seven years later, someone's life has actually been affected by it. And Noland himself started an X account. He said, Twitter banned me because they thought I was a bot. X and Elon reinstated me because I am. And then Elon said, first ever post made just by thinking using the Neuralink telepathy device. Over time, I think that almost all brain or spine injuries can be addressed. And then Neuralink posted, we aim to build the future of brain computer interfaces. Want to create the future with us? So they have openings on their career page or you can join their patient registry. So continuing with Nolan and his Neuralink experience so far, Nolan shared on his X account this post of him speaking at Neuralink last month. He had this to say about future abilities with Neuralink that he'd like to see unfold. The Optimus robot sounds so cool. <laughs> like, and I, not just, not just how cool it is, because it is freaking awesome, but at the same time, it'll change, like, specifically quadriplegics' lives. Um, Having a, a full-time nurse is something that is not possible for people like me. I am so lucky that I have my parents and you know, my brother and other people who work with me around the clock, but most people don't have that. And I can just imagine having an Optimus robot as like just someone that's there all the time that can help you with whatever you need. It's, it's gonna, oh my gosh, it's gonna change so many people's lives. It's gonna be amazing. Um, so I would like to see that. I think that's in the works. Um, I mean, it, it'll just be, it'll be crazy. Also, it would be really cool if like, um, Optimus can be like a little chauffeur. Um, <laughs> like I'm, I'm thinking like, hey, get me one of those cyber trucks and have them just like, have them like toss me in and have the cyber truck have like an eject button. And, uh, <laughs> Y'all can, like, it'll be great um, just to travel around. Like, uh, I basically have to have a group of people around me all the time to get me to go anywhere. Like, like I'm from Arizona, if y'all don't know, so, like, driving up here was a 10-hour drive, and I loved it. I didn't mind, but the people around me, not so much. <laughs> so, um, like, the people driving, sorry, David. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but imagine having, like, self-driving car and a, an, an ability to get in the car and have someone get you out and stuff like if I could do all of that without needing other people just everything that improves you know independence um, quality of life uh, it's I can I can just see the possibilities and I know that for me already it's been amazing but I know where this can go and it's gonna keep going and y'all are gonna keep busting your asses and I know that because I've met like so many of you and I'm just so impressed and y'all think that like the amount of data that I've collected and the amount of work I've put in is impressive but I don't think it is a drop in the bucket to what y'all have done and I know that you're going to keep pushing like it's it's just going to keep growing and growing uh, exponentially and what is possible is going to um, it's just going to keep expanding and Y'all are going to keep changing people's lives, and it's going to be amazing. So, um, yeah, I think that's I think that's about it. I don't know how you did this, but I think you did tap into Elon's master plan, which is, you know, when you uh, can imagine a future where you buy a Tesla, it comes with an Optimus robot yeah. uh, that has a SpaceX you know, rocket engine <laughs> attached to it that you can control the chauffeur with yeah. Neuralink implant going through a bunch of tunnels. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I've I mean, thought, that, that's the vision, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I've thought that if this all works out, 
I mean, it would, it would benefit Elon to put me on Mars. If I could, <laughs> if I could control like an army of Optimus robots, that's way better than anything y'all could do. <laughs> so, like, I would be, I would be so useful. So, um, Elon, if you're seeing this, man, like, hit me up. You know? <laughs> yeah, uh, that's kind of a joke, but not really. <laughs> Yeah, I guess you can come. <laughs> I won't need you if I have all those Optimus robots. I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm just joking, Mom. I love you. <laughs> the video of Nolan at Neuralink this week was so amazing. I urge you to all follow him on X. Watch this video this week if you can. And just these first three stories this week. I mean, Tesla making the safest, cleanest, funnest, most technologically advanced vehicles in the world coupled with Neuralink, that will hopefully one day soon allow Noland and others to move around on their own in autonomous cars. Yes, and that doesn't even include SpaceX. This is all because of one man, Elon Musk. We celebrate him on this channel, we support him, we share his incredible accomplishments with you each and every week. So if you've been watching us for any length of time, then you get it. But it seems that many of the legacy news doesn't want this positive news to get out. They lie by omission. They report on FUD to keep people from really understanding what's going on with Elon's companies. And that's where you come in. Share these stories, these real positive stories that give us hope. So moving on to FSD, Elon said three significant improvements to FSD will roll out roughly every two weeks. Should be really shining bright by late April or early May. 12.3.1 addresses several small annoyances and should start rolling out this weekend. Dr. Nodal says, I drove FSD beta 12.3 about an hour today, downtown, in college, during class changes, on and off highways, and through odd speed signs. It's not perfect, mostly too wussy on speed limits, but damn, it's impressive. It'll definitely pass the spouse test. Elon said the tendency to drive too slow should be addressed in version 12.3.1. Brett Winton from ARK Invest weighed in. He said, fits with the thesis that the rate of progress becomes more predictable now that FSD sits on full stack neural nets. Suspect this improvement rate expectation is derived from max training compute available crossed with the typical amount of data required to fine tune out an error. And Elon said, yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> okay, Come got on, it. Easy. <laughs> Dave Lee says Tesla FSD is going to get bonkers when it can back out of a parking spot in a busy parking lot, drive to your destination, and then park at your destination's parking lot. Elon said probably only a few months. Robert Scoble says Tesla AI is very underrated. Had two AI founders while my car drove us through San Francisco. If you have a friend with FSD, beg them for a ride. If you think Elon has competition, you are simply wrong. There is none. Elon said, yeah, 99% of people have no idea and improvement will accelerate dramatically now that we are no longer AI training compute constrained. Wait, so what does that mean? That they have enough computers to do what they need or they have enough training data? Uh, well, both? Maybe both? <laughs> I don't know. I think both. I just got to say, Jesse and I went for a drive yesterday for about an what, hour and a half. Mm -hmm. I've never felt the car act like this before. This was like you were actually relaxed for the first time ever in FSD. Uh, yeah, I mean, we've scientifically proven that like my heart skips a beat sometimes when full self-driving does something wrong. I was so relaxed. So, yeah, we went for about an hour and a half drive. And then later on that night, I was like, let's see what it does at night. Another hour and a half drive, wow. zero interventions. Can I just say, if Jesse voluntarily puts it into FSD, something has changed. Uh, it's, it's changed. The world is changed. Wow. Hey, and if you like the work we do, please hit the like button. It really, really helps us out. We talk a lot about media bias here on Tesla Time News. This recent interview with Kimball Musk caught our attention, where Kimball asked this question. Why would the New York Times want Tesla to fail? But yeah. man, they write articles like they want it to fail. Yeah. And they have been forever. And, and I'm always like, you know, aren't they supposed to care about alternative energy? Aren't they supposed yeah. to care about sustainable future? But actually, they're looking for drama. There was a time where a New York Times journalist um, drove the car around in a parking lot until the battery, we, uh, our, our, this was back even in 2012. Even back then, the, the, the car would refuse to run out of, uh, out of energy because it would just drive slower because we wouldn't, we didn't want people, anyone to be stranded. So the guy had to just drive, to continue to drive in circles. And then I don't even think it actually ran out of batteries. He just called a, a tow truck for you because he wanted the photo shot of Jeez. a Tesla being pulled onto the back of a tow truck. And they published the article and we're like, oh my God, did we do, we did, did we really do this? And so we looked at our data logs and our data logs 
show the guy driving around in circles in a parking lot. <laughs> and we, so we shared that with the world. We shared it with the New York Times itself and the publisher of the New York Times. We're like, you need to publish a retraction. And I'm sure the guy was fired and stuff because he's not allowed <laughs> to do that. But, um, you know, that doesn't, it isn't right. And Elon said, good question. So I went out and found that article by John M. Broder. So New York Times, February 8th, 2013. It's this article here titled Stalled Out on Tesla's Electric Highway. It's a very negative story in which Broder makes some very obvious false statements to anyone who knows anything about the cars, including this one. I drove into the service plaza, hooked up the supercharger, and warmed my hands on a cup of Dunkin' Donuts coffee. If this is Tesla's vision of long-distance travel in America's future, I thought, and the solution to what the company calls the road trip problem, it needs some work. And yes, indeed, it does appear that John Broder left the New York Times soon after that article was published because he lied. Yeah, as Kimball said, he purposely tried to get that Model S to die by driving it around and around. And he was supposedly fired because Tesla caught it. Now, did the editor of New York Times catch it before it was published? Nope. Did the editors of New York Times try to reproduce this issue? No, they just blindly trusted this reporter because it made for a story that they wanted told that basically Tesla suck. But after leaving the New York Times, John M. Broder went on to work for, wait for it, wait for it. The New York Times. What? This is actually on the New York Times website. John M. Broder joined the editorial board at the start of 2018. And in fact, if you look down the bottom, he joined the Times in 1996. So basically, his entire career seems to have been at the New York Times. No, I mean, you, this can't be right. This can't be the same John M. Broder. Uh, just scroll down his own page on the New York Times website, and along with his other articles, you will find his February 8th, 2013 article on the Tesla that he supposedly was fired for. And now he's on the New York Times' editorial board. Look, if you know more about this story, please reach out to us at hello at nowyouknowchannel.com. We'd really like to get the whole story on why John M. Broder was supposedly fired and then rehired, not only as a writer, but as an editorial board member at the New York Times. That's disgusting. That's, I mean. I mean, you would think that would be enough to get you banned from journalism in any, you know, at any of the major at publications. any reputable newspaper. Right, because yeah. it wasn't like you reported what you thought. You made up a story just so you could get that picture of a Tesla being pulled onto a tow truck. And he didn't know at the time. I mean, go back to 2012, 2013. No one knew that Tesla knew all this data about the cars like we know now. So he's driving around like, hey, no one will find this out. <laughs> and then Tesla's like, wait, why did the car die? Oh, because he made it die. So Rivian announced last week that Rivian owners now have access to the Tesla supercharger network and will start receiving NAX DC adapters in April. And Zach and I have proven that it does indeed work. So we should have a video coming out soon showing our experience of charging our Ford F-150 Lightning and the Rivian R1T at Tesla Superchargers. Now, to be clear, we did not get the free NAX DC adapters from either Ford or Rivian yet. Yeah, we still have not been able to sign up for either adapter yet, and I highly doubt that we're going to get either adapter by April. So then how did we charge? We used a third-party adapter. This one is the Vortex from Lectron. So we're gonna be reviewing it on our Now Let's Review channel soon. So go subscribe to NLR so you don't miss that. But this is huge. It has changed my thinking about both of these trucks. I mean, before I thought, well, we can't really do any long distance stuff. We can't tow our solar trailer because like, it's just so hard to charge at EA sites. And I mean, we have plenty of experience trying to charge at EA sites. Um, we have a video both where we wanted to go camping and we just needed to charge one time. <laughs> one time and it didn't work. And then we decided, let's see what all the chargers around us are like. And uh, all. <laughs> yeah, all seven of them or whatever. So we took a whole day, we drove around the entire state. And so we tried to find as many EA stations as we could. And predictably, lots of them had, let's say, issues. <laughs> Forgetting even long distance road trip kind of charging, just being able to kind of pull into a local supercharger and charge up um, in a reasonable amount of time is a huge step forward for these companies. But Tesla Evangelist says if Rivian and other non-Teslas only have access to V3, V4 superchargers, they definitely don't have access to 15,000 supercharger stalls. What's the real number, Rohan? And Rohan Patel in charge of Tesla policy replied, it's actually just over 16,000 stalls open to the rolling Nax autos for Ford, Rivian, and others soon. Additionally, about 11,000 are just for Tesla customers, mostly version two stalls. Multiple stations being added every week, and really our only limiting factor is utility interconnection, which takes too damn long. If you buy a Tesla, you're automatically given a free Tesla charging membership, which gives you 30% cheaper supercharging costs than non-Tesla vehicles. 
This was confusing to many people because they're like, wait a minute, we're a Tesla customer, but we also have a Rivian. Does that mean we automatically get 30% cheaper supercharging? No, it does not. He should have worded that a little differently. Mm -hmm. He went on to say older charging stations would require additional investment and technical work to open to non-Teslas. Much better to focus on rapid growth in new, better superchargers and generally much larger stations with more stalls. And that was consistent with what we were seeing. Um, we couldn't charge at every supercharger. So we pulled into like our closest one and we were like, oh boy, let's get charged up and it wouldn't work. So we had to go to another one, which you can find on the Tesla app. It's all easy to do. All right, it's time for the Cybertruck Roundup. Yeehaw! The Cybertruck Roundup. So Cybertruck itself posted, produced over 1,000 Cybertrucks worth of 4680 cells at Giga Texas last week. So does this mean that they have enough 4680 cells for 1,000 Cybertruck run rate per week? Can they continue this run rate or was it just an all out week? Like where they pushed really hard. But I did the math at 123 kilowatt hours per truck. That would be 123 megawatt hours of batteries in a week or six gigawatt hours per year at that run rate. And that is the big question. Is this just like, are they stopping here or are they going to keep going? I mean, they got four yeah, lines. Yeah, they're stopping here. <laughs> they got four lines of, of cell production now and I think they're going up to six. So uh, I wow. think they're going up. Wow. Uh, would you like to see what 370 Cybertrucks look like, Jess? Check this out. Sorry, Merritt said, a record 370 Cybertrucks spotted at Giga Texas today. In fact, one viewer counted them all. I think it was 380. Um, and thank you to Brad Sloan, one of the Quad Squad drone pilots. Go check out his channel. Support these guys because without their camera in the sky, we would not see all of these amazing Cybertrucks. I hope one of those is ours. Yeah. And Elon said production is ramping. It certainly is ramping. Gregor Truck said this is single-handedly the worst gap I've seen on any door, period. It's a bummer this is what was on MKBHD's all-wheel drive foundation series Cybertruck door that he's reviewing. Dang it. And Elon said not a door fit issue. He said about 15 Cybertrucks in service had an issue where the door striker loosened in the field due to insufficient torque after door fit. This takes about five minutes to fix in service and has been addressed in production. But yeah. Tesla, give him, give him a truck that doesn't have that issue so that the whole world doesn't see that problem. Uh, Sawyer Merritt said, beautiful new Cybertruck night picks from Tesla China. They have UFOs in China? I know. Is it being picked up for the mothership? <laughs> What's going on? Uh, and Tesla has launched six new Cybertruck wrap colors. If you're afraid you won't be able to find your Cybertruck in a sea of Cybertrucks at the mall parking lot, well, here you are. Here they all are now. The new colors are bolded at the top of the list. All right, so let's see here. We got new forest green wraps for your... Uh, for your Master Chief edition. The Satin Crimson Red, the Iridescent Purple, Tactical Green. Is that different from Forest Green? I guess it's a little lighter. It seems a little lighter. Maybe that's a better color, I'm not sure. Satin Dark Gray, and lastly, the Copper Tinted Clear. So do any of these uh, suit your fancy? I mean, they're really cool, but I think I'm looking forward to just plain old stainless steel. I'm just a plain old stainless steel guy. The more I've been seeing pictures of Cybertruck, I actually like it more when it's covered in dirt. <laughs> I think I like dirt as opposed to, and I know that like there's all these people cleaning their Cybertrucks. Why don't they get a wrap that has it pre-dirt on there? It's always dirty. If you live in a city. Huh? Huh? I think I'm going to be able to keep it dirty. <laughs> don't worry. And we turn to our awesome sponsors at Cybertruck Owners Club, where forum members have found this in the Cybertruck service manual, inductive charger headers on the battery pack. So we know that Franz von Holzhausen said on the Jay Leno Cybertruck video back in December, we are working on inductive charging. You don't even need to plug anything in at that point. You just drive over the pad in your garage and you start charging. Now, this finding seems to back that up. They'd be able to, like, at the service center, plug in a, a wireless charger and you'd be good to go. Mm. This could open it up for robo-taxi stuff. Mm -hmm. Anyway, if you want to find out all about Cybertruck and more, go to our friends at the Cybertruck Owners Club. There, they've got this amazing tracker so that it's updated, like, every second. So you can see where the Cybertrucks are going in the world, and you can feel bad that it's not coming to you yet. Last week, we released our in-depth, The Lithium Crisis Solved. In it, we talked with Austin-based startup EnergyX's founder, Teague Egan, about how they're able to refine lithium without mining. Not only can you watch it on In-Depth, which was great, but we also released the full interview over on our Disruptive Investing channel. Yeah. 
In that interview, we went through the actual chemistry of how EnergyX is performing their process. And it was really important to learn about because there's one step in there that should be able to reduce their costs by 40%. It was so cool getting to talk with Teague. He was really knowledgeable about their process and it was a great deep dive for how this stuff works. And thank you to EnergyX for sponsoring the show. I urge you to go check it out. Again, if we're gonna switch to all EVs, we're gonna need lots and lots of lithium. So dare I say, we're in the middle of tax season. Yeah, Ugh. I know, I know. But there are many available U.S. federal tax credits, and I wanted to pass on this little tool I found from Rewiring America that can help you to determine what tax credits are available to you. We'll post the link below to this handy tool that makes it pretty easy to see what the different credits are for. Things like EVs, EV chargers, solar, batteries, geothermal, weatherization, electrical panels, and more. Let us know down in the comments if you find it useful. So Tesla has updated its referral program with another new award, one year of premium connectivity. So if a new buyer of a Tesla Model Y, Model X, or Model S uses someone's referral code, they not only get three months of full self-driving beta, but also one year of premium connectivity. That's cool. That's worth about 120 bucks. So what does premium connectivity mean, by the way? Well, all Teslas use cell phone connectivity for navigation, but as the chart shows, there's a bunch of features you don't get unless you pay for the $10 premium connectivity package. Okay, so it's pretty important to get premium connectivity because uh, if you want sentry mode, satellite view maps, which you couldn't live without, music streaming and uh, like live traffic visualization. And don't forget about internet browsing who actually browses in a Tesla. <laughs> we actually posted that as this week's Patreon poll question, so we'll have the results later on in the show. And speaking of new Tesla referral award perks, it's Cyber Hammer time. Hammer time. W what are you talking about? So, earned, not given, the Cyber Hammer is uh, now available yeah. as referral award. Yeah, but Jesse, it's 35,000 points uh, f you know, on your Tesla account and mm -hmm. only 800 were made, so I, I don't know, we don't, we don't have any points in our account, so I wasn't able to order one. So I'm, I'm not excited about it. I, I, I went on there and I was like, oh, maybe we could get one, but we haven't been using our referral code. We haven't been sharing it with you much, so we don't have any points. And I don't know. I just I thought it'd be nice to have a hammer on the set. And... I've already ordered it. Wait. It's coming. We're going to have one of the 800. Wait, what do you mean you ordered it? You I need... just hope that there's enough uh, room on the set. Wait, I'm thinking maybe right what, what do you mean you ordered me? it? You had to use points to order it. Yeah. How do you have Thank points? Thank you so much to people who use our referral code. Um, now, I guess going forward, if you want to, you can use our referral code and get the one year premium. We're getting the cyber hammer? Yeah, we're getting the cyber hammer. <gasps> so <laughs> let us know in the comments. I'm so excited. Where we I was put so it. bummed. Yeah, I know. I was so bummed this week and I'm like, there's no way we're going to get one. This is great. Can we smash our cyber truck with it? It does say, note, do not strike hard surfaces with cyber hammer intended for display or gym use. Gym use? Yeah. So, you know, uh, CrossFit. Like, you're going to hit, like, big monster truck tires with it. Oh. It's like, uh, instead of uh, chopping wood, which is more dangerous. Oh. Um, but uh, I think display purposes is kind of what we're going to use it for okay. here. I don't, yeah, cyber truck <laughs> probably isn't the right target. I'm thinking right there. Right here. Yeah. We'll see how Hang it from the ceiling the right here. <laughs> the handle <laughs> is going to be pretty long. So I don't know if it's going to fit. Oh, we'll man. We'll have to. This is so exciting. To set I'm or so excited yeah, now. So we reported on the French white hat hacker team, Synactive, winning big at the last Pwn to Own hacking competition back in January. Well, it looks like Synactive is on a roll. They won again at the Pwn to Own Zero Day Initiative event in Vancouver. Confirmed, the Synactive team used a single integer overflow to exploit the Tesla ECU with vehicle CAN bus control. They win $200,000, 20 Master of Pwn points, and a new Tesla Model 3. Their second. Awesome work, as always. Their second Model 3 and $200,000. Again, so smart of Tesla to do this, give an incentive for the smartest hackers in the world to try and find weaknesses to hack into Teslas and then pay them a fraction of what you'd have to pay to reverse engineer if a real hack had ever happened. And you make your cars the safest from a cybersecurity point of view than all of your competitors, which I'd like to point out, as cars contain more and more computers that control more and more things, all cars can potentially be hacked now. So for those people that say, well, I'm not going to buy a Tesla because it's a computer on wheels. It could get hacked. Any modern day car can be hacked. Wouldn't you rather be driving a car that has been proven secure by the best hacking teams in the world? I would. 
because it also means that the best hacking teams in the world don't want to steal your Tesla if they could hack Tesla's Tesla and get cash and get cash and the Tesla free and clear. They don't even have to bring it to the chop shop. Hey, if you want to share a clip you've seen on the show, but you don't want to share the entire one hour episode, go to our Now You Know Clips channel or go to X where we have many of these chopped up for little bite sized pieces that are easy to share. So the 12,500 Tesla workers at Giga Berlin held a Works Council election last week. So depending on who reported this story, you get different takes. Uh, German Tag Spiegel PNN says, IG Metal wins Work Council election at Tesla, narrow victory for the union list. What's a work council? So in Germany, work councils play a significant role in representing the interests of employees within a company. These councils are elected by the employees and they work in collaboration with the employer to ensure that the rights and the interests of the workforce are protected. So it's a union? No. Uh, so work councils in Germany have the power to do these things, right? Represent employees in discussions, uh, inform them of different things. Basically, it's like an advisory council, I would say. Okay, so Tesla's Giga Berlin employees are not represented by the IG Metal Union, but some IG Metal members are on the elected work council. Correct. So Tesla Giga Berlin employees just elected 16 IG Metal members to the 39-person work council. So even though IG Metal doesn't have a majority on the works council, they are the largest block with 39.4%. IG Metal accused the previous work council of being too employer friendly. East German IG Metal district manager Dirk Schultz says when people were fired, it was usually done without objection by the works council, which did not even hear from the affected colleagues. This is the opposite of how a works council should work for the employees. Now, to me, and I'm not an expert on German unions or anything, but to me, this looks like Tesla employees seem to be more inclined to have a works council that focuses on their specific needs and concerns rather than joining a larger union that represents workers across various industries. So it sounded like the newly elected work council is going to focus on getting longer cycle times on the assembly lines, more line breaks, and more staff intended to improve working conditions. But something we should all be aware of and talking about is that ultimately when Optimus... Tesla's humanoid robot is up to the task, I believe it'll be replacing at least some, if not all, the human workers at Tesla factories. Check out our in-depth Tesla bot is coming, Tesla bot equals the end of human labor, for more information about why this will be true. So Hyundai has had to recall over 147,000 EVs in the US this week due to faulty ICCUs. What's an ICCU? the Idaho Central Credit Union? Uh, no, it's the Integrated Charging Control Unit. Basically, uh, this is the thing that uh, charges the 12 volt battery and charges the high voltage battery. It's also what allows Hyundai's to do vehicle to load. Okay. But basically what happened is the ICCU can fail and stop charging the 12 volt battery, leading to things like windows, doors, infotainment, and critical driving functions to stop working. That does not sound good. It's not. It's already led to several people getting stranded by their cars. So the recall is going to replace the ICCU? On some of them. Apparently, Hyundai is going to test out everyone's ICCU, fix the ones that are too far gone or replace them, uh, but also install new software on all cars, which to a certain extent will nerf the ICCU for fast charging, which may lead to slower charging time. Yikes. I mean, I wouldn't be a very happy camper if that were my car. So when are they going to roll out the over the air software update? Uh, the, no, 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 no. It's not over the air. It's a, it's a, a plug it into the dealership uh, software update. Are you serious? Update. Yeah. You're going to have to go to the dealer. So on top of all this, you're going to have to take your car to the dealer because your car might stop charging. Yep. And get this, the letters about this recall are apparently not coming out until May, which I think is kind of <laughs> weird. That's to give them more time probably to come up with the software update. Yeah. So, I mean, this is, this is but, through. But I just want to go uh, to yeah. the nerfing part. Mm -hmm. So they might just be like, well, your ICCU is okay, so we'll just lower your charging speed. But you bought the car thinking you got a certain charging speed. Now it's been nerfed. Right. And it might not fix the problem. It might just delay the problem. Until you're out of warranty. You're out of warranty. So wow. that's a little bit scuzzy to me. I feel like if this happened to Tesla, it would be plastered all over the world. Like it would be the biggest news story. Mm -hmm. So check this out, Jesse. Two men have been accused for allegedly conspiring to send millions of dollars worth of Tesla trade secrets to undercover law enforcement officers posing as potential customers. 
Klaus Fugbeil, who is a 58-year-old Canadian national and resident in Ningbu, China, and Yailong Shao, who's 47 and a citizen of Ningbu, China, are the owners of this China-based company charged by the Department of Justice last week. So from the court documents, it appears that the company may have been High Bar Systems. Remember that? That was the Canadian company that specialized in high-speed battery manufacturing technology that Tesla acquired back in 2019. Mm -hmm. Flugbile was arrested in Nassau County, New York, but his co-defendant, Xiao, remains at large and is likely back in China. Assistant Director in Charge James Smith of the FBI's New York field office said Klaus Fubile and Yailong Shao allegedly used stolen confidential information developed by their previous employers to establish their own Chinese-based competitor. U.S. Attorney Brian Peace for the Eastern District of New York said the defendants stand accused of stealing valuable proprietary technology from a U.S. electric car manufacturer, Tesla, and using it to set up a rival business overseas. As alleged, the defendant set up a company in China, blatantly stole trade secrets from an American company that are important to manufacturing electric vehicles and which cost many millions of dollars in research and development, and sold products developed with these stolen trade secrets. Rather than invest their own resources into competitive technology, the defendants looted victim company one, which is Tesla, trade secrets for their own financial gain. So the court filing specifically mentions Tesla? No, it refers to victim company one, but all signs point to this being Tesla. I mean, I think it's safe to say whatever tech Tesla got when they bought high bar systems has now been sold many other times over to other battery companies, primarily in China. Wow. So, yeah, I mean, this is why it's so important for Tesla to just keep iterating because mm -hmm. that four year old technology is probably now common knowledge. Right. And I mean, I don't think that it was fully, fully developed. I mean, otherwise, right. I think Tesla had to keep working in the tech. So, I mean, I don't think it's the end of the world, but it is. No. And they bought scary. that company for a very small amount of money for just a just a mere 13 million or something. All right. Next up is Ellie in space with the SpaceX update. Hey, guys, we could be seeing a fourth launch pretty soon. In fact, just eight days after the third test flight of Starship, the Flight 4 Starship moved to the padded Starbase for upcoming static fires. Yes, they are working quickly down at Starbase, and according to Ars Technica, SpaceX is eyeing a quick turnaround for the next Starship flight. We know when the third flight Starship reached near orbital velocity, which is the best performance we've seen to date, and this largely validated its capability as an expendable rocket while SpaceX continues to try and nail down vehicle recovery. But with this next launch, SpaceX SpaceX is expecting an expedited turnaround time and is targeting the next flight in about six weeks. And this is according to Gwen Shotwell, the company's president and chief operating officer. So they still have a few things they need to nail on this flight compared to the third flight, which they tried, but unfortunately didn't succeed. These include better control of the super heavy booster on the descent, securing heat shield tiles, and eliminating roll issues on Starship during orbital operations and re-entry. Speaking of heat shield tiles, I did quite a deep dive on my channel about those tiles how they're falling off, and why people are finding them on the beach. So if you're interested, here's a little clip of that. We were just going around and I told my significant other to slam on the brakes. I think I found something cool. I wanted to hop on here to talk about a post that I made that has over 1.2 million impressions on X. And that is talking about these SpaceX heat tiles. Those tiles that all of you guys have been messaging me about, asking if I'm selling them, asking if you can get one, when the fact of the matter is they weren't even my heat tiles. A friend found them and a lot of people envy what you got. <laughs> so I think we got really lucky, honestly. We had a uh, storm blow through right after the launch. So there wasn't many people out and about. So the storm and the, the high tides, if you don't have four wheel drive, it keeps people most away from the back of the beach there. But back to the fourth launch, the FAA is on board. Apparently they quote, didn't see anything major. We don't think there's any critical systems for safety that were implicated after the third launch. So this means usually if there's not any critical systems for safety implicated, the mishap investigation can be pretty clean and can move pretty quickly. The Starship test flight on Pi Day did result in a mishap investigation again because the vehicle did not reach Earth's surface intact. But compared to the other issues we've seen after flight three, these issues didn't really reveal any safety concerns. And if you're wondering, the next Starship launch won't carry any Starlink satellites, but SpaceX will instead use the test flight to demonstrate the ship's ability to survive re-entry into the atmosphere. 
So I hope that you enjoyed this update. If you did, please come check out my channel because I'm always covering Starship news. Thanks, Zach and Jesse, and I'll see you soon. Thank you, Ellie. And yeah, she was referring to uh, Kevin Coleman, the FAA's associate administrator. He said, we want to get away from the launch by launch approvals and get more into what Part 450 was really designed for, which is an approval of a portfolio of launches. This should allow SpaceX to launch Starships faster. As it is today, each Starship launch that doesn't go flawlessly requires a report from SpaceX to the FAA explaining in detail what went wrong. All this paperwork can slow down the launch cadence. And Elon said, this would be great. Oh, and check this out. SpaceX posted teams test the new emergency chutes from the Pad 40 crew tower in Florida. That looks really fun. I mean, that should be a ride at Disney World. I, I sort of thought that it was going to end about halfway you know, it's like he's like sliding down. I'm like, OK, he's going to reach the bottom. He's going to reach the bottom. He's going to reach the bottom and he doesn't reach it. Like, I'm like, wow, that's a long slide. So this is like an escape system if you're at the top of the tower and yes. there's a problem. Yeah. Elon said, even though it's meant to be used for emergencies, it looks like a lot of fun. And Kiko Donchev, who's SpaceX's VP of launch, he's worked there for 14 years. He said that this system will allow SpaceX to scale to bigger towers and spaceships, um, because if you think about it, when you put people on spaceships to fly to either the moon or mm. to Mars or to Shanghai, um, if there's a problem at the tower, they have to get out quickly. Well, you can't just hop on the elevator, right, with hundreds of people. Mm. So down the chute you go. Mm. And Elon reposted SpaceX's post of docking confirmed. Dragon has arrived at the space station. And don't forget, Falcon 9 has landed on Just Read the Instructions, completing this booster's 19th mission and the 75th landing on this drone ship. Wow. All right, it's time for Into the Future, sponsored by our friends at Henson Shaving. This is definitely the best razor that I've ever used. You can pick yours up with a box of free blades. You can get 100 free blades if you use our code. Now you know when you check out. Escape into the future. So everyone in the electric motorcycle world has been waiting for a long-range electric motorcycle, so they should be pretty excited to hear that Livewire, that's the electric spin-off company from Harley-Davidson, they've just unveiled their S2 Mulholland Cruiser e-motorcycle. Well, hang on. Before we get too excited here, this seems a lot like their previous bike, the S2 Delmar, which did not have that much range for a motorcycle. So what are the stats for this cruiser? Like how, how far am I going to be able to go cruising? Uh, well, that is a good point because the Mulholland does share the same 62 kilowatt, 84 horsepower motor and the same 10.5 kilowatt hour battery with the Delmar. Okay. Yeah. So that's what I'm worried about. What's the range? Uh, let me see. Uh, 121 miles. That's 194 kilometers. See, that's just eight more miles than the Delmar. And what's the real range? What's the highway rated range? Uh, 73 miles, uh, 117 kilometers on the highway at 55 miles an hour, 88 kilometers an hour. And I see that the starting price is $16,000. Holy cow. Yeah, this highway range just, I, I don't think, cuts it, unfortunately. And I mean, this is at 55 miles an hour. I mean, what's that all about? You know, that's a really brings up an interesting point because traditional Harley cruisers can weigh up to over 900 pounds. The Mulholland only weighs 432 pounds. So why didn't Livewire put some more batteries on there and get the range up? It doesn't even look like it's long enough to comfortably seat a passenger on the back. Yeah, I mean, they could have extended the frame. I mean, they don't even need that giant Harley engine block or the gas tanks. I mean, 10.5 kilowatt hours of battery just isn't enough, like double that. I mean, am I crazy? And I know that basically there's not like a lot of room on the motorcycle to put these batteries, but couldn't you do some like saddlebag looking batteries or something? <laughs> right. Like just something to really, But I mean, really... they could stretch the bike out longer. I mean, it, it really needs some more length anyway for a longer seat, so. I mean, I know that 10.5 kilowatt hours is already like kind of a lot, but it's not for when we're talking about the kind of riding that I think most motorcyclists want to do, but I'm yeah. not a motorcyclist. You let me know. Maybe 73 miles on the highway is just way, and you just want to go 55 miles an hour. That's what I usually see Harley riders doing. All right, it's time for going green. So Shibatoshi Nakamoto said plastic recycling is virtue signaling. In the USA, only about 5% of plastics actually get recycled. Most just ends up in landfills. If you want to actually reduce your plastic waste, consume less plastic. Elon said, yeah, recycling household trash, with rare exception, is actually counterproductive. It costs more energy and causes more environmental harm to recycle than to not recycle. And Alex says, according to the latest research, this is true for plastic, but not for paper, glass, metal, or organic waste. Recycling works very well for all these types of waste and should be intensified worldwide. So I did a little research because I was trying to figure out who's right here, what's going on. 
According to a 2017 study published in the journal Science Advances, since 1950, the world has created, get this, 6.3 trillion kilograms of plastic waste, and 91% has never been recycled even once. More than half of the plastic now on Earth has been created since 2002. Plastic pollution is on pace to double by 2030. And to a certain extent, um, Elon is correct here. There is a reason why recycle comes third in reduce, reuse, and then recycle. Recycle is basically the worst option. Yeah, reduce first. And, and let's talk about that for a second. This doesn't have to be a depressing thing because if we just take a minute and think about a few things in our weekly lives, in our daily routines that we can make a slight alteration to, I'm convinced we can dramatically reduce our plastic consumption. And as we've talked about recently on the show, we are now finding how detrimental it is to have nanoplastics in our bodies. So let's help each other. Comment below one thing, one change you have made or will make in your life that will reduce plastic use for you. It can be an easy one, like not consuming water from single-use plastic bottles, or as Jesse talked about, not using those plastic cutting boards when you cook. Or, or my effort to find a way to use glass bottles for my soda stream, which I still haven't fully solved yet. <laughs> So I'll be looking for your helpful comments below on that. We can make simple, easy changes that can last a lifetime and that will save us money, reduce plastic waste, and reduce plastic from getting into our bodies, which is a win, win, win. Now, going forward, I think that basically, yeah, we should be focusing on reducing. Um, and I do think that we should be focusing on recycling. I know that plastic recycling right now is pretty pathetic. Um, at least in the U.S. At least in the U.S. and pretty much all over the world. I just don't think that we should uh, give up on it just because it doesn't seem to like work all that well if I put something in a bin with all of my other recycling and it doesn't end up getting recycled. It's right. not that, it's not, it doesn't take a brainiac to figure out why that isn't happening. All right, it's time for sunspots. So the latest data just in from Wood McKenzie and the American Clean Power Association, ACP, shows that the battery storage market in the U.S. was up 101% in Q4 of 2023 from the previous quarter. 4,235 megawatts were installed in October, November, and December of last year. That is the first time ever that over three gigawatts were deployed in one quarter. California led, closely followed by Arizona and Texas. John Hensley, ACP's VP of Markets and Policy Analysis, said energy storage has unique capabilities to address grid resilience with the ability to serve as generation, load, and transmission. These benefits to the grid have been evident, especially in recent years, as storage has provided reliability and stability during critical moments like historic heat waves. With a robust pipeline, the future for energy storage deployment is strong. Residential storage was kind of flat. 218 megawatts were installed in Q4, which was only up a bit from the 210 megawatts installed in Q3. A lot of this was because installations in Puerto Rico dropped as incentives dried up there, although California picked up a bit. And I just wanted to share some interesting charts here. This is the annual energy storage deployments from 2017 through 2023. Look at that growth. 2,902% growth. We're talking almost 26 gigawatt hours of grid scale batteries deployed so far. Wow. But look at their five-year projections. So this is what they're projecting out to happen until 2028. Do those look like exponential curves to you? No, they look very <laughs> linear. Funny how, wow, it's going like this and then it'll go like this. Oh, and just for fun, uh, solar fact here. The U.S. added a record of 32.4 gigawatts of new solar in 2023. It's the first time in 80 years that a renewable electricity source has accounted for over half of the annual capacity additions to the grid. What, what happened 80 years ago? Uh, the U.S. was damming things. We had lots of dams going on. Oh, okay. So the, like the Hoover, Hoover Dam. dam. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So 800,000 Americans added solar to their homes in 2023. Yeah. Total solar in the U.S. is now 177 gigawatts. It's pretty good. Hey, if you'd like to get solar on your house or batteries, but you kind of don't know where to start, reach out to our friends at Energy Bell. They have all the answers for you. They'll help you go solar and battery for less. Links down below. Let them know that Zach and Jesse sent you. All right, it's time for a video contributor story of the week. What do we got? Alan sent us the story about the South Burlington, Vermont Tesla store opening. Hey, Zach and Jesse, Alan Johnson here from your investor club here with Paul. Hi there. And uh, we're here at the brand new Burlington Service Center in Vermont, South Burlington. It's on Hannaford Road, but don't be confused by the Hannaford, which is now over there. This used to be Hannaford. Now it's a Tesla service center and store. 
store just opened up yesterday and I had to come up from the dirt roads of Lincoln, Vermont and to look at the new shiny cars. Um, actually, all the ones in the lot here are not for sale. These are just service loaners at this point. They don't have their license from the state to sell. Yeah, they'll be delivering cars as soon as they can out of here. It won't be long for sure. But yeah, they're doing a lot of service vehicles, which is really nice because sometimes it's hard to get a ride when you're getting Tesla service, but not here. So they've got two service bay doors you can go in and two very large service areas. We'll get a better look at those once we get inside. And are we ready for the big reveal? Yes, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, there is a Cybertruck on site for you to play with. Open the door, you can climb in, see all the fun stuff. It's amazing. Like they say, it's different in person. As crazy as it looks in pictures, it's just mind blowing when you see it in person. And then we've got a nice little uh, waiting area for service. And this is one of two service bays. Another the service bay, wash station in the back there. So, if you get a chance, come on up to South Burlington. It's a beautiful place to visit. Lots of great amenities around. And you get to see a cyber truck. Now you know. Now you know. Thank you, Alan. That just happened. That's so great. Yeah. yeah, and now you don't have to visit us in Massachusetts to get your cars repaired in Vermont. <laughs> that was so ridiculous. That was before. ridiculous. I'm really <laughs> glad that there's a, a service center up there. Looks like they have a lot of bays too. So, kind of all of northern New England should be serviced by that one center. I'm yeah. so excited. And just go there to sit in the cyber truck. <laughs> Definitely. All right, it's time for our Patreon bonus stories. And on Patreon this week, we have so many stories that we have to divide it into two videos. So we have two <laughs> bonus video stories with lots and lots of stories in each. It's incredible what you get for a buck a month. So, I mean, this month they're going to be getting like five or six Patreon bonus stories for yeah. a buck a month. Yeah. And, and that helps the work that we do. So please head on over to patreon.com slash now you know. Support us for just a buck a month. Get all these stories. Don't forget, there's also Investor Club bonus stories this week. And head on over to Disruptive Investing Channel, where we have another store. Yep. And also, big shout out to everyone who joined us on our Patreon live stream last week. It was really fun to that get really to talk was. to you guys, talk about, you know, supercharging uh, our Rivian and Ford and stuff like that. Yeah, that's another perk that you get on Patreon. So we hope to see you there. All right, we're back from our Patreon bonus stories. It's time for the shout outs. Who do we got? Steven C. D. Zach D. One. Jerry C. Lasio Agree. And Bobby G. Tahoe. That's the coolest name ever. I feel like you could have like a crime fighting show. I'm Bobby G. Tahoe. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Your names are going to be added to the list of amazing other patrons who help support the show at the end of the show. Thank you. All right, it's time for our Patreon poll. The question this week was, do you use the internet browse feature in your Tesla? And uh, I was honestly surprised. 33% said yes, that they do use the browser. Maybe it's just been a while for me. and I. It was so slow the last time I checked. It was slow the last time I checked, but I mean, I don't know. No, normally, I just pull out my phone, but I don't know. I mean, if you want a big screen, it's great. All right, it's time for Elon's X's of the week. So Sway Lee Lee Sway said, just got the Tesla truck. It's crazy, Elon. Much love, brother. Elon said, you're welcome. Hope you like it. Ellie in Space says, Starship and super heavy vehicles are preparing for upcoming flights as SpaceX seeks to increase their launch cadence throughout the year. Me thinks Ship 29 Booster 11 flight could be as soon as April. And Elon says, hopefully. Elon went on to say the Starship is designed to traverse our entire solar system and beyond to the cloud of objects surrounding us. A future Starship much larger and more advanced will travel to other star systems. <laughs> Just in case you were worried. All right. Dima says Starlink in Mongolia. And Elon said, yep. So one of the most remotest places on Earth. And you can get the internet at 300 megabits per second. Doge Designer says Don Lemon asked Elon Musk about his personal medical prescription in a public interview. Elon was kind enough to answer him. Shame on you, Don. Ashley St. Clair said, what a sick human being Don Lemon is. Up until recently, ketamine was a taboo treatment for depression because of clinical study regulations. Ketamine treatments gave me back my mother and helped countless others with severe depression. Talking openly about this saves lives. And Elon said, he's just a bad guy, plain and simple. Sawyer Merritt says, Jim Cramer on Elon Musk's ketamine use. Here's a man who admits he had depression, admits that he's taking a drug that had helped millions of people, and for that he's pilloried. There are many people who would never be brave enough to admit that they're taking this drug. 
Andy Lund says, the reason I posted about ketamine at some personal risk is that it thought it might help people struggling with bouts of depression. In my opinion, it's a far better solution than being zombified by SSRIs. The New York Post said Google interfered in U.S. elections to help Democrats 41 times since 2008. Elon said, this article understates the magnitude of the problem. Google interferes to help Democrats thousands of times every election season. This is to be expected when their censorship, a.k.a. trust and safety teams, have far left political views. Sawyer Merritt says, I've launched a petition urging NHTSA to stop paper recall letters and classifying over-the-air software updates as recalls. I discuss these issues with Tesla, which they're working on. And Elon said, this is a good petition. Yeah, so go sign it here. Here's the link. Elon says the rate of change of the ratio of digital to biological compute is hyper exponential. Mm. And I just want to point out all this talk about Don Lemon and being censored on X. Uh, if you look at his demands, which we're showing here, I mean, he wanted a cyber truck. He wanted, you know, five million dollars up front. He wanted to be the first podcaster in space. I mean, like he wanted to control what was going to go on the X platform. And Elon said Lemon's demands were indeed beyond absurd. His team is just trying to do damage control. Doge Designer says legacy media want to control what you know, which is why citizen journalism is essential. Elon said, hearing news from actual experts or people on the ground is way better than having it be filtered through non-experts, media, or people who weren't actually there. Chris asked, just out of curiosity, what do you need AGI for? Elon says, to understand new physics about the universe and invent amazing technologies. And then Elon's brother Kimball said this about Elon. I mean, I think Elon's actually quite, quite reasonable. I think that the when you're under so much pressure, yeah. and, and, and really there's, there's an enormous amount of pressure, yeah. It's not that I'm the voice of reason. It's more like I'm helping Elon find his voice of reason. And Elon said, I'm grateful for Kimball. Turns out that Boeing deleted footage of work on the faulty door. And Elon said, just a coincidence. Doge designer said, people love Elon Musk, a fact that mainstream media hates. Elon says, I love people. And then he went on to post, there is no meme. I just love you. So there's this story that Sam Bankman-Fried's father drafted tax legislation for Elizabeth Warren and donated thousands of dollars to the Democrats uh, for elections. And Elon said, transferring capital from highly efficient capital allocators, entrepreneurs, to highly inefficient capital allocators, government, would destroy the economy, making everyone worse off. By the way, SBS father is Elizabeth Warren's tax legislation advisor. Let that sink in. Hmm. Benjamin says, Microsoft CEO on OpenAI. Doesn't matter if OpenAI disappeared tomorrow. Quote, we have all the IP rights and all the capability. That is from the court case. And Elon says, as I was saying. <laughs> Fred Lohner, who works at X, says, team is firing on all cylinders, going to ship some really dope things in the next week's release. Keep your eyes peeled. Elon says, great stuff coming. Wall Street Silver says, Florida governor threatens to send Haitian illegal immigrants to Martha's Vineyard. And Elon says, lots of big homes in Martha's Vineyard, so they should be able to house a lot of migrants. Robert Sterling says, here's how much the Democrats hate Elon Musk. For today's EPA EV announcement, they had four cars on stage, one from GM, one from Chrysler, two from Ford, but no Teslas. Last year, Ford sold 72,000 EVs, GM sold 75,000, Chrysler sold zero, Tesla sold 1.8 million. Elon said, ridiculous. The New York Post ran a story about 200,000 migrant deportation cases that were tossed because the Biden administration didn't file the paperwork. And Elon said, wow. Spore said, after the last seven days we've had, I'd really like the Elon Musk isn't actually that intelligent or accomplished crowd to remind us who they are so we can endlessly ridicule them for eternity. And Elon said, I'm pretty smart for a human. Elon reposted Doge Designer's post of X is adding new filters to the job search. Hmm. Deborah said, need a hug. And Elon sent a hug. Penny2x says, I had dinner last week with a young SpaceX employee who was hired directly by Elon. This was after his mother and father both tragically passed. Elon insisted that said young man learn to build rockets hands-on. Changed his life. Elon says, I love my team and have great respect for those who do a tough, honest day's work on the production line or in service, and they know it. Certainly hope they do. I found this interesting. IO said, by comparison, Fox News, the most popular cable news network, averages about 1.5 million viewers a day. Take a look at Joe Rogan experience. 14.5 million followers. Wow. Elon says, cable news is dying fast. Jenny says, this is the moment when Texas National Guard became overrun by migrants rioting to get across the border here in El Paso today. We were there and saw it all happen. Absolute chaos here. Elon said, yeah. Guy Freeze Do says, breaking, FDA loses its war on ivermectin and agrees to remove all social media posts and consumer directives regarding ivermectin and COVID, including its most popular tweet in FDA history. Hey, look, the conspiracy theorists were right again. And Elon said, no kidding. Smoke Away says, China is all in on robots. Elon said, future wars will be drone wars. Elon then posted, X is where media hoaxes go to die. And Physics and History says, if you want to master something, teach it. 
Elon said, true. And Sawyer Merritt says, news, Tesla making great progress on the construction of its Hollywood supercharger that includes a diner and drive-in theater. Elon said, I was there a few weeks ago. It'll be awesome. All right, it's time for Community Mail Time. Community Mail Time. And I just want to start off with this PSA. Uh, this e-bike company, Bix Tricks Bikes, uh, they had a whole shipping container of their latest Juggernaut FSST e-bikes stolen from their warehouses in British Columbia, Canada. Could you be on the lookout for these? If you see one of the shipping containers or the bikes themselves, please contact their founder and CEO, Roshan Thomas, at CEO at BicTricks.com. This was over a half a million dollars worth of their new e-bikes stolen. So let's help them get it back because, I mean, these bikes have to go out into the world. And if you spot them, they're pretty unique looking. Um, just report it to him or to the police and let's let's get these guys caught. Because, I mean, there's a, probably hundreds of customers who now don't get their bikes. Ryan and Mathis sent us this video of the new EV Hummer that they saw in Rochester, New York. Kenneth spotted this Waymo Jaguar I-Pace in Scottsdale, Arizona. Denard saw this Subaru Solterra charging in Stowe, Ohio. Ken came across this flea market being held under a solar panel covered parking lot in Palm Desert, California. Jason spotted these three Cybertrucks in Moab, Utah. Nice. Mavin saw this EV bus in Bellingham, Washington. Brant spotted this wrapped Tesla Model Y on the highway in Ontario, Canada. PK saw this Tesla energy ad while watching Tesla Time News. Mike spotted this Lucid Air in Plain City, Ohio. John saw this black Cybertruck at the San Diego UTC Tesla showroom. Niraj spotted this Model 3 Highland with manufacturer plates driving around Chicago, Illinois. Bart saw the Cybertruck at the Supercharger in the Northeast. And Jack saw this UFO Tesla Model 3 in Dania Beach, Florida. Nice. All right, it's time for EV's tips of the week. And Doug sent us this Tesla tip on how to quickly check your energy usage and tire pressure. If you pull up your little media mini window here, you can see while you're watching Tesla Time News, you can just slide this to the left brings up your current drive in odometer readings and um, energy use. One more slide, you can see your tire pressure. Not too shabby, huh? It's warm today, so my pressures are up. Now you know. Thank you, Doug. Yeah, it's not the most obvious uh, menu no. on the Tesla there. It's a little bit hidden there. Yeah. All right, it's time for Supercharger Reviews. Remember that you can send them into our website at nowyouknowchannel.com and uh, let's see what we got for this week. Hey, Zach and Jesse, I'm here in Cambridge, Ohio, uh, getting a supercharge. It is an eight stall version two. Currently, we're the only ones here. Uh, it's located behind the uh, parking lot at Sheets. Uh, this actually has some amenities you can go to. Uh, there's also restrooms and Wi-Fi at Sheets. Uh, there's a Cracker Barrel nearby, the Dairy Queen nearby, and also a couple of hotels. Uh, all in all, I'd say it's probably a 6 out of 10. That's it. Back to you. Hey, Zach and Jesse. I'm in Huntsville, Alabama. The home of the Space and Rocket Center and Marshall Space Flight Center. That's a NASA facility. Behind me is a 12-stall version 3 supercharger location, brand new. Behind that is a Top Golf traction. Off to the side there you have a Wahlburgers hamburger joint. Down that way you've got a Dave and Buster's. I'm not very familiar with that. But there's other attractions in Huntsville. In this same area there's the a new Orion Amphitheater. And like I mentioned at the Space and Rocket Center it's got a uh, an IMAX theater and a, uh, an 8K planetarium, digital planetarium. I'd give this about a 8 out of 10. It's probably going to graduate to a 9 out of 10 before a year or two is over. And now you know. Jesse. We're at the brand new uh, Cary, North Carolina supercharger right off of I-40 on Bass Pro Lane, um, right off of the Harrison Avenue exit. Uh, there are 10 stalls, uh, 250 V3, and they already have the trash and recycling bins here. And in the plaza, there is 
tons and tons of things to do. There's a Bass Pro Shop, obviously, since it's on Bass Pro Lanes. There's a Chick-fil-A, Wendy's, McDonald's, and then also uh, great chicken and waffles and a bunch of other things. In addition to the other uh, eateries, if you cross the street and you happen to be needing to spend the night, uh, one of the highest rated hotels, uh, the Umstead Inn and Spa, is the other side with level two charging. Um, so a really great place to stop over for the night if you're going through the Triangle area for a road trip. Boys, what do we give this, what grade do we give this supercharger? A 90. Nine out of 10, all right. A nine out of 10. Mostly because there's Chick-fil-A and you guys like Chick-fil-A. All right, and now you know. Hey, Zach and Jesse. Uh, this is Perry from uh, New Philadelphia, Ohio at the new uh, 12 stall, uh, 250 kilowatt supercharger. It's in the in the uh, Sheets parking lot. Uh, there's tons of food around here. Uh, there's barbecue across the street. There's uh, Arby's. There's a, a Burger King right here. A Denny's, Chipotle, Starbucks. Um, Long John Silver's so plenty of options and this is a pull through all, all pull through which I, this is the first one I've encountered so uh, yeah it, it's pretty nice we're just getting charged it up we just got done camping in our Model Y and uh, we're, we're heading home so uh, now you know Thank you so much for doing Supercharger Reviews. Remember that you can upload your own on our website, nowyouknowchannel.com, and you can review all the Supercharger Reviews that have ever been uploaded there as well on a handy map so you will know where they are. And for beautiful Superchargers this week, Tesla Charging said new Tesla Supercharger in Las Vegas, and Drew Baglino said, great shot, thank you, Tesla Charging, for sharing charging art with everyone every day. And Owen Sparks says, Drew, while we're here, how about a Tesla sketch competition to get your artwork on select superchargers, perhaps one for each state? Maine, for example. Oh, and so this is the version 4 supercharger, which obviously has a much bigger panel. Yeah. And I like that main one. That's a pretty good... Wouldn't that be cool? That's a pretty good design. Yeah. yeah. I think they should open up to competitions and then, I don't know, get the community involved. Well, I mean, for every state, you have hundreds of superchargers. Maybe not all version 4, but going forward. Yeah. I don't know. That'd be kind of nice. It's really cool. Having a local artist with, you know, some local art on the supercharger, it'd be pretty fun. Yeah. Or maybe just like big chalkboards and you can write whatever you want. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What do we got for new superchargers in the world, Jess? We got number 40 in Indiana, the 12 stall in Munster, Indiana. We have the 6 stall in Nassau, Japan. Number 108 in Japan is the 8 stall in Nagoya. Number 43 in Colorado is the 12 stall in Johnstown, Colorado. The 8 stall in Gansvort, New York. The 8th stall in Ventura at South Ann Street in California. The 6th stall in Bowen, Queensland, Australia. Number 7 in Malaysia is the 6th stall in Denkil. Number 215 in Canada is the 12th stall at Manning Park, British Columbia. Number 132 in the UK is the 8th stall in Bristol. The 8th stall in Madrid, Spain. Number 80 in Pennsylvania is the 12th stall in Yardley, Pennsylvania. Number 87 in Sweden is the 20th stall in Sundsvall North, Sweden. Number 45 in Nevada is the 20th stall in Las Vegas. Number 60 in Washington is the 12 stall in Washington State, United States. Number 27 in Denmark is the 12 stall in Sodervik. Number 49 in Arizona is the 16 stall in Peoria. The 16 stall in San Mateo, California. Number 86 in Australia is the 6 stall in Albany, West Australia. Number 67 in Spain is the 8 stall in Toledo. The 8 stall in North Hudson, New York. Number 198 in Germany is the 3 stall in Dusseldorf. And the 16 stall is an urban and it was just reopened. So it was closed and now they reopened it in Valley Stream, New York. Number 91 in New York is the 12 stall in Orangeburg, New York. Number 156 in Florida is the 20 stall in St. Petersburg. And number 440 in California, number 2212 in the USA, number 6194 in the world is the 16 stall in Whittier on Washington Boulevard in California. Nice. And I just want to say thank you to you guys on Patreon for supporting us. You get your names put here um, at the end of the show if you're at the $5 level or above. 
There's tons of perks over there, polls. Uh, you can hang out with us on live streams. There's our investor club. There's mugs, t-shirts, all kinds of fun stuff. So please join us there and support us. And I want to thank Elon this week. I mean, I want to thank him every week because without him, the show wouldn't happen. But I mean, this week, especially Neuralink. Oh my God. I think a lot of people thought it was just some kind of science experiment for monkeys or something. Mm -hmm. No, it's to help people's lives. And if you go watch that video of Noland and see what change it's made to his life, you will be astounded. I, I still can't wrap my head around it that they just a few years ago started this thing and now they've made something that's life-changing for him. And I think it's the sort of thing that, um, you know, if it's not affecting you, you just don't really want to think about that much, mainly because there is no good solution. I think that it's really powerful that we are going to actually be able to solve it uh, probably within just a few years. Yeah, and keep in mind, this is an FDA test. I mean, they have to do this limited test first to make sure it works. Mm -hmm. If it works, then it can roll out to more and more people and change more and more people's lives. It's not its not even that expensive. So, I mean, this could be dramatically changing the world mm -hmm. soon. Unbelievable. I just don't think many people knew about it other than you folks watching here on Now You Know. And lastly, I want to say uh, full self-driving 12.3. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I, Game changer. You've seen me, right? You've seen me do uh, full self-driving tests, and I used to hate it we, we need to go to, we need to up, make an updated in depth where yes. we, we show it because yes. i mean you were just almost falling asleep you were so relaxed i was completely relaxed i don't know what they did the jerkiness is gone we, well we know what be, they did i mean they switched over to a neural network instead yeah. of hard-coded it drives like how i drive and maybe maybe a little bit slower but that's to be expected i mean i switched my whole view i mean i was talking about it as if it was a 15 year old i'm now thinking of it as like a 60 year old it was a little bit conservative at times, like an older driver yeah. would who knows to be safe, um, I would say that's what it felt like. It felt like a human. It was cautious, but not timid. Yeah. Um, and I don't know how you can make that distinction. I'm sure that people watching from other countries where English isn't your first language go, aren't cautious and timid <laughs> the same word? Um, no, I think that it's slightly different and I'm just blown away by it. So I uh, can't wait to bring you some more uh, stuff on that because uh, you know I was I was waiting. I was honestly waiting to tell you when it was going to be a game changer. I'm not one of these influencers who's like, this is the best thing since sliced bread. Every single release. Uh, this is the first time that I actually voluntarily will use full self-driving. We'll see you guys next week. Now, now you know. know.